Today, I want to talk to you about how you can get started developing code for Batfish. I'm going to do this by talking through how we'd fix an example bug like this one, where a user has reported a parse warning in an FRR file in their Sonic devices. Now, if you found your way here, I'm assuming you've already kind of gotten started developing Batfish. There are instructions on the wiki for getting your IDE set up. And I assume you know what Batfish does, but just in case, um, you know, you want to check out batfish.org, you can find out about what it does, you can find out, you know, how to get started with Python docs, or our Slack channel, or GitHub pointers. Um, we have a good video series showing you, uh, you know, how to get started using Batfish on your network. And if you don't believe us, you can go read about other articles, tools people have written, how they've actually deployed Batfish in their networks. But to jump right in, let's go see about this particular bug. <clears throat> so the scenario here is that the user has said, hey, I'm using Sonic. And I have this command in my uh, in my BGP config, BGP max med on startup 15, which Batfish is throwing a warning on. It says it doesn't understand this command. This is very typical for us, right? All the time users have configs that they do not want to get warnings on. They want to instead understand what they mean, make sure that Batfish models it or safely ignores it. Uh, so the first thing I did as the developer responding to this bug is figure out what this command does. Now, this command is a really common command on any of the devices that model their BGP syntax on Cisco IOS. In this case, what it does is it says, hey, when the BGP process is booting for the first 15 seconds, advertise all the routes as being really poor. Uh, there are, I went and looked at the command reference for FRR. It turns out you can also add, in addition to the time limit here, which ranges from five seconds to a whole day, you can also override the med value, which uh, by default is just set to this maximum value of, you know, about 4.3 billion. So what do we need to do for this in Batfish? Well, the answer for this one is actually really nice. This behavior only affects the cost of routes when the router is booting. So it's kind of a transitive state. And Batfish does not model the different transitive states of the network. Instead, Batfish models only what the routes are like once the data plane has converged. What that means is all we have to do is add the grammar for this command to Batfish and we don't actually have to model what this command does. So let's jump over to IntelliJ. I have IntelliJ set up uh, according to the developer instructions on the wiki. I've got the Bazel plugin going. I've just synced the project, making sure all the code is up to date. And I immediately jumped into the FRR grammar tests, which is the place to find, for every vendor we have one of these, but that's really the place to start when you're working on one of these issues. Now I'm sure you've already made yourself familiar with the project, but just in case, um, in Batfish, we have these, you know, test Java files in every project. And in particular, in this case, we're looking at org Batfish grammar, where we have the different vendor-specific syntaxes, Arista, AWS, Cisco. And here, the tests for FRR are down here at the bottom. So, um, you know, the first thing I have done is I have jumped directly to the FRR grammar test. Let's go ahead and give that a run. Uh, we can see they all pass. But while that's running, I'm going to look around in here for any kind of related commands. So it turns out there's already a maxmed related command that is supported. In this case, we're saying, hey, the maximum administrative med value should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is actually a command that is extracted and modeled. But this is going to be a nice starting point for writing our test of our new syntax. Of course, as you can see, all the existing tests passed. So let's go ahead and copy one of these tests here. And instead of administrative med, let's do max med on startup. And as I mentioned, there's two variants. So first, let's start with the time only variant. So on dash startup 15, this is the thing the user uh, reported a bug on. And you don't really need to do this, but let's also go ahead and make sure that when we do go implement this, it doesn't actually affect the max med administrative command. Because maybe a developer who didn't quite uh, know what they were doing, you know, they might actually uh, accidentally change both fields. Now, Bazel does incremental compilation, so I have actually gotten it to just recompile this one file and rerun the test. And because I clicked this button here, it actually only ran the specific test we're looking at. And so we can confirm that this user's bug report is correct. In fact, Batfish does warn uh, when it's executing this command. So what we see is uh, a lot of information here about how this test worked. So for example, we can see what the stack trace was. We can see that the batfish uh, parse function was running and it found its way through the grammar, the statement rule is top level rule, then it found its way into router BGP, BGP inner, RB BGP, and RBB max med administrative. Um, that is matched up here where we see, hey, this is the sequence of commands I was on. 
it tells us where in the input the rule was on the second line. So that's right here. Um, and the big complaint, it seems to be, is that, hey, I don't understand what this on s stuff is, right? I don't know how to recognize that. So we know we probably should go find out this RBB maxima administrative. So I'm going to do a search for that. I'm going to restrict my search to only antler Raymer files. And here we go, frrbgp.g4 has the config we're looking for. Now, real quick, um, almost all the CLI grammars have this exact same structure. We start with a lexer file and a parser file. So for example, I believe s router bgp will be defined here in the parser. It is. But as is typical, we often have BGP configuration in its own file because BGP grammars tend to just be so large. Um, so we've done that there. And in fact, S router BGP is uh, defined right here. It starts with router BGP, an AS number, an optional verb, and then a bunch of inner statements, one statement per line, um, contain the configurations of the BGP process itself. So BGP inner could be lots of things. It could be address family, always compare med, BGP, neighbor, things like that. One thing to notice is that all of these are only one word, right? Only one token. So address dash family or always dash compare dash med, but typically only one token. And this is really nice for antler because it makes the grammar, uh, the parsing process itself really efficient. So we see here, okay, it was an interstatement of router BGP, starts with BGP, and then it was RBB max med administrative. So actually this is a little bit of a problem for us and I'll show you why in a second. So let's say we're going to go and start adding, uh, you know, this new alternative, right? RBGP max med on startup. Well, so we can just add this here. And now here's the problem, right? You can see that in fact, the parser is only looking one token ahead because it jumped into max med administrative without ever even looking for the word administrative, right? It was only looking at max med and it said, oh, I only have one rule here for which the next token could be max med. So I'm going to go into that rule, and then I'll have an error at on startup later. So the issue is now we've added a second rule, max med administrative and max med on startup at the same level of hierarchy. Now, if the parser happens to see max med next as the first line, as the first token after BGP on the line, then it has to actually look another token deeper while staying in this same level of the hierarchy. That tends to add work to the parser and lead to more inefficient behavior. So we're going to fix this now. We're going to fix this now. Um, to kind of add add some level of the hierarchy here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new rule called RBB max med, which starts with the token max med, and then inside of that rule, it's going to delegate to one of these two rules. Now I'll take the word max med out here and the word max med out here. Right, and now this parse tree is gonna stay really simple and one token at a time. They call that LL1. So I see the word BGP, I go into RBBGP. I see the word max med, I go into RBB max med. I see the word administrative, I go into RBB max med administrative. There's one more thing we're gonna do. Because in all of these grammars, you can have hyphens in the middle of tokens, uh, we actually like it to be that the all of the things that are in prior tokens are abbreviated. So for example, here, I'm actually gonna change RBB max med administrative to RBB MM. So that way you know the token here is just administrative and the token here is on dash startup. I don't have to know that it wasn't on space startup. Um, and so to push this through, I'm going to make that change as well. So now you can see, if you follow this down, we're gonna have RBB GP up here. Uh, up here, it's gonna go into RBB max med take the word med off, it's going to go into RBB on startup, taking the token on startup, process this med. Now, of course, let's go back to the issue real quick. We can see that, in fact, the next token is the time, and then there's the optional med value. So to add this, I'm going to say uh, startup time in seconds, BGP startup time. Uh, and I'm going to add a new rule here for BGP startup time. And I'm going to say you in 32, 5286,400 seconds. And so what I've done here is now I've actually created a specific uh, rule for this in case it happens to be used in other places in BGP. I've documented the legal values and their time. And you may wonder why I picked you in 32 here. Well, the thing is that 
In terms of the lexer, we don't have that many tokens for numbers. We typically have uint8, uint16, and uint32. uint16 is too small to parse this value, so uint32 is the next best thing. I document the legal value here because over in the code that actually processes uh, this command, that is where we need to double check and say, okay, you know, I did look, this does look like it parses right, but maybe we need to, we need to do quality control on the values and warn if the values are out of the legal range. So now I think the grammar is in a good shape. On startup is required, startup time is required, and then Meg can be provided optionally. So let's go ahead and rerun the test and see what we get. So Basil's incremental uh, compilation failed pretty fast, and let's see why that is. It looks like it failed to even generate the Java file, right? So this is generating the Java code corresponding to the antler grammar. And the reason is that it says, hey, the parser is relying on a token called on startup, but that token is not defined. It has an implicit definition. So to double check that, let's go look at the lexer. You'll see the lexer has an on match, but not an on startup. So that's an easy enough fix. Uh, on dash startup, semicolon. And now we've told the lexer, if you happen to see the string on dash startup, you know, without spaces, uh, then lex it as this token, and that token is now available for parsers to use. So I bet that problem will go away. So this time it did succeed generating that file. It's compiling the headers for the Java grammar. And now something else has failed. In this case, it looks like what happened is we're trying to import a symbol called RBB maximum administrative um, context, which is used in this RBB maximum administrative rule. And of course, I think we know why that is. It's because I actually renamed this thing to make the grammar LL1. So sometimes when you fix the grammar, you have to go and update any existing rules. Um, and actually, I let IntelliJ do a lot of work there. I changed the name of this thing to be correct. IntelliJ automatically imported the thing, and it also automatically removed this now unused import of the old value. So one more time. You can see it's getting farther again. It actually compiled the Cumulus grammar as well. It compi compiled that fish because Cumulus relies on FRR as does Sonic. Um, it's compiling that fish and now it's actually started running the tests. And this time it passed, right? So this command actually now parses legally. So for completeness sake, let's keep going. Time and med and let's pick, oh, I don't know, 4 billion as the value we're gonna use. Again, I want to check that it parses, but that it does it leaves administrative alone. Um, and of course, I think by hitting play there, I probably only reram this one test. So let's run this one. Okay, great. So all the variants work. Now let's just go ahead and like sanity check what we did here. So I'm going to add another zero. I'm going to make it 40 billion. And what should happen is the test should fail because of course that's not a valid uint32. And indeed it did. We can see now it says, hey, uh, what I found was a number, which is 40 billion. I was expecting either the end of the line or an 8-bit, 16-bit, or 32-bit thing. Instead it was an arbitrary length number, which is the fallback for anything that doesn't fit into one of these three. So we did correctly get an error and we would still warn if that were the input. Now, if I happen to put something here like 90,000, where we know that's invalid, uh, this is not going to fail because, in fact, um, you know, that is a valid UN32. And if we need it to fail, we need to handle it in code like this, where we would say, okay, you know, go parse that value. And if it doesn't fit into the valid range, then throw a warning. You'll see that all over the place, um, but mainly for config constructs that we actually do support. So let's put this back. Now, the last thing I want to do over in this grammar is actually indicate, hey, we're not actually supporting this, right? So I'm going to stick the word null here as a sentinel that says uh, to the reader, hey, I didn't implement this. This null is also used by the config annotation tool to indicate that this thing is unimplemented. Um, and so now what we're saying is, hey, I've written the grammar here. I have you know, fleshed out the rule completely. I've documented what the valid values are and what units they're in. So if we do need to implement this someday, we're ready to do so. However, in the short term, all I'm doing, all I have this for 
here is to make sure the parse tree itself is valid. Now that I've done that, I'm going to fall back and I'm going to rerun all the tests in the file just to make sure that I haven't messed anything else up. And in a second, this compilation process will finish, the tests will run, and they will pass. And then we'll be happy we can move on to actually submitting this thing as a PR. Great. So we now know that these two new tests pass. We've, we've used the entire syntax, and we haven't broken anything else in there. So now over here, I have my, uh, my terminal here. I've created a branch. A A471 is the name of the issue. I'm going to look at the git diff really quick to make sure I review what I did. So we added a new token that was needed for this new syntax. We refactored the rule so that it is still LL1, only one token at a time for the parser. We moved maxmed out into its own rule and took it away from administrative. We added another variant for on startup. We documented what the grammar is in case we need to implement it later. We fixed up the extraction code to handle the renaming we did. And we added tests for all the legal variants of syntax that we care about. So this is great. We can now go ahead and prepare this. I'm going to follow the standard structure and say um, which process I'm modeling, modifying, FRR. And what I did, uh, parse and ignore bgp max med on startup. Startup fix that finish. All right, so with that done, I reviewed the diff, uh, the PR is ready to go, and because I've set up pre-commit, as you can find in the instructions on the wiki, uh, Git itself ran all the code quality checks for me. It, if I had changed Python code, it would have run black isort and autoflake. Because I changed Java code, it just made sure all the Java files were formatted correctly. In case my IDE is not configured to do this for me, it's a nice backup. This just helps me avoid stupid formatting errors being caught in pre-commit. And I can go send this as a uh, pull request to the Batfish team, who can hopefully review and merge it quickly. So uh, with that, you know, this will actually close the issue. Thanks for watching. And I hope you uh, come join us. When you do want to come join us, just come in here to the Batfish code, click on Docs, and you can see uh, how to contribute yourself. I hope to see you all on Slack, and thanks.